Good morning. Welcome to Rock of Ages. My name is Doug. I'm one of the elders of the church. Welcome to the second Sunday in Advent. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle virtually, digitally, I guess. And today you are going to actually see uh, our guest preacher, which is Daniel Weeb. He's going to be lighting the second candle. We look forward to that. Just a reminder to everybody, this season of Advent, it's um, we believe Jesus is the light of the world and he brings light into this world. So as you go through the four Sundays, you gradually increase the light in the world as the anticipation grows. The Advent candles uh, feature four candles and the fifth candle is the Christ the candle. So last Sunday we really lit the candle of hope and today we are lighting the candle of love. And so... Um, we also want to encourage you, if you, uh, in these times when we're not meeting in person, if you want to create your own uh, Advent candle wreath at home, we think that's a great idea. As these um, slides are spooling through, I hope you can both be listening to me and also to paying attention to the, the announcement slides. I want to feature a couple of things. You may or may not know that even today at 1130, Shauna will be uh, conducting Sunday school via Zoom. I think that's awesome. So that's at 11.30 this morning. Then I also know today the um, youth is going to be meeting out at uh, the Solid's place, Seth and Brody's place. I think that's from 2 till 5. And uh, so it's just important for us to remind everybody that there are lots of things going on. Even though we might not be physically meeting in person, uh, our ministries are continuing and lots of them in a virtual format. So today, here's what you're going to see. Um, you're first going to get a brief announcement from um, Vern and Ruth Batchew, and they're going to talk about the 40 days of prayer. They're going to talk, give a bit of an update and talk about um, what's left in the 40 days of prayer. Then we're going to hear a message from Daniel Weeb, who is currently living with his family in Leon, Nicaragua, and um, I, you're going to love his message, so we look forward to that. Following his message, uh, this is a communion Sunday, so even now, before uh, the rest of the service begins, I would encourage you um, to gather your communion elements, the juice and bread and or crackers. And so after the message, Connie and Art Hundeby will leading us in a time of communion. I also want to remind everybody that um, there are three worship songs that we, we will be singing virtually this morning. And uh, there was a playlist uh, that, was, that should be in the Facebook group featuring those songs. And it also can be found if you search Rock of Ages SK, one word, Rock of Ages SK in YouTube. And if you click on playlists, you'll see a playlist for today, Sunday, December 6th. So enjoy those. I also want to remind people that, uh, yeah, this is a month of giving. Lots of times we um, look to charitable organizations where we can make our donations to. And um, the giving has been excellent uh, during these COVID times in our church. Many of you have pivoted to the online uh, giving. And I know Don Olson has been really helpful to you in that. And she's very appreciative that that many people have converted. But we just want to do a general reminder that... Um, this is still, um, even though church isn't meeting in person, your gifts are important and, and we just, we know that all we have is from God and so we give a portion of that back to him and to his work. And so we just want to thank everyone for their uh, generous donations thus far and we want to encourage you to continue that. So without further ado, I will now um, transition to the Advent Candle Lighting with Daniel Weeb. Enjoy that and enjoy the rest of the service. And thank you for being with us this morning. I also want to say one final thing. This service, I believe this video is about 48 minutes in length. And I, I want to say this full of grace and I want to speak a little bit of truth, but I want to encourage those of you that are participating and watching it. I want you to watch it from the beginning until the end. Um, it is easy in these COVID times for us to um, push pause on some things and we can watch a little bit of it or we can say we'll watch it later and, and I know many of you are watching it throughout the week and that's that's excellent but I think there is something to be said about starting a service and ending a service when it's complete so I just want to encourage you um, to to watch this uh, Sunday's service 
with your family and watch it right until the very end. Enjoy the rest of the day, folks. Merry Christmas and welcome to the second Advent Sunday. As you can see, I'm as Christmas as it gets. Many people say that when you live in the tropical country, how can it possibly feel like Christmas? But then I saw one of my kids' nativities and it had a palm tree. And I remembered, oh yeah, that's right. Christmas actually began in a tropical country. So, today's candle is actually called the candle of Bethlehem. I'm gonna light last week's candle first, the candle of the prophets, particularly the prophet Isaiah for telling the coming of the Messiah. Today's candle, called the candle of the manger, Bethlehem with the symbol of the manger. Our story comes to us from Matthew chapter 3, and it's the story of John the Baptist. John the Baptist enters the scene, and he begins to foretell that the Messiah is finally coming, any moment now. And he says, I, I baptize you with water, but one will come whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. And he's going to bring a new bapti baptism of repentance. I believe it says uh, um, in fire. And one of the scripture readings for today, I'm not going to read them all, but one of them is from Isaiah, again, the prophet Isaiah, chapter hmm, 11, I believe. Yes, chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of power, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy with justice. He will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf with the lion, and the yearling together. And a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together. The lion will eat straw like an ox, the infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the earth. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his place of rest will be glorious. Good morning, Rock of Ages. Uh, we're here to give you an update and an announcement regarding 40 days of prayer. Um, by the time you see this announcement, we'll be 35 days into it. And so far, it's just been a wonderful experience in knitting together the body. And Ruth, what have been some of the main themes in 40 days of prayer? Well, I, I first of all want to say that this has been a really wonderful journey that we've been on. When we first started, we started with the idea of the disciples going to Jesus and really had only one request of him, which was, Lord, teach us to pray. And we feel very strongly that the Lord has been with us on this journey. Some of the messages that have been coming through, there has been a real sense that this is a season of perhaps God birthing something new at our church. And I was reminded in a reading this morning that the Acts Church was actually started in a prayer meeting. So I think we can be very encouraged in that, that God still has many things he wants to do with our church. This has been a time when we have gotten messages about being bold, stepping out in faith and uh, taking a risk. We're moving forward with a sense of, of joyful expectation that we are actually headed towards something that is, is very good and that is... Um, very much in in uh, God is blessing us with a, a movement towards something. There has also been a strong message right from the beginning about the idea of one another churches and one another scripture. 
So that is something we want to pursue as well. Well, thanks for that. And I just want to uh, leave an open invitation to the congregation to join us in the remaining time. We've looked at our past, we've looked at our present, and in these last uh, few days of 40 days of prayer, uh, we're going to look at our future and really be uh, praying about where we're going and, and our next pastor. So please, even if you haven't been involved in person or, or virtually or on your own, uh, please uh, join this uh, home stretch now. Uh, we also want to let you know that uh, 40 days of prayer is now 42 days. Instead of quitting on Thursday, December 10th, we're now going to uh, complete this on Saturday, December 12th. We've had an average of 15 to 20 people per night, and so far we've spent 800 hours cumulatively in the various evenings and Saturdays all together uh, in the presence of the Lord. So we just invite you to come along and be blessed. Good morning, Rock of Ages Church. We are the Weebs. I'm Daniel. I'm Judah. This is Talia. And I'm Jenna. And I'm Eli. And I'm Jenna. And I'm Aria. <laughs> and Last but not least. <laughs> we moved here to Nicaragua to be business slash missionaries. So we bought an ice cream store. And now I'm working. <laughs> This is what we call chabalos in proceso. It means young guys in process. And uh, it's basically our youth group every Friday from three to five. Hola chicos, dice hola. 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 And uh, over here I want to show you something. About a year ago, mm, no, year and a half ago, Allison Weedy, you planned a special fundraiser for us. And at first I said, no, please don't. And then the Lord convicted me and I said, realized that it was my own pride because we weren't doing ministry yet and I didn't feel I guess I didn't feel worthy and uh, the Lord laid it on my heart. You know what? This is a great time to buy a vehicle because when we first moved here we got around with taxi and it was it was way more difficult than I ever imagined it would be. And then we bought a really piece of crap car which we have since um, gifted to somebody else who's doing ministry. And so this right here, this beautiful truck is a four liter diesel SUV which has seat belts for every one of our kids and enough room for all of those teenagers over there, for us to be able to go and do our events because we're always kind of in around the neighborhood. So that has been a huge blessing to us. So all that money we use towards this truck with a little bit of our own money and praise God, it has been such a blessing to our family. So. And here in one of the churches, we do our reinforcement classes with our teacher, Jose. Hi everybody. Good morning. Well, here we are with some students that most of them don't go to school, so that, that is our principal focus, that we want that they learn what they need for life, what they would like to do when they're older. So that's what we're trying to teach them. Focus on that, and then we have English class, math class, a Spanish class, so they can learn how to read, how to, how to write, how to speak, how to do add-ins, and all those things. So that's what we're trying to do here with these kids, with Daniel. So hi everybody. This is our weekly Hot Wheels Club that we meet every Wednesday afternoon and I basically run it exactly like I used to do Kaz. Lots of games, snacks, Bible stories, and we play with Hot Wheels cars. And uh, so in the same way, we do kind of like the Kaz dollars except they're Hot Wheels bucks. This is our carpentry class. We currently meet in Uriel's house. That's the guy in red. Way voila. And uh, our guys here, these are, this is our afternoon group because we have a group in the morning and in the afternoon. Right, Henry? Verdad? And uh, you can see they're making everything from Christmas trees to furniture over there, Orlando. Fernando is learning to cut with my saw. And uh, over here, they're making not too. Uh, Sure, a sword maybe. And of course, <laughs> juguetes. So, definitely making my father proud right now. Oh yeah. So yeah, we meet every day. They often have a, a time where they have a snack and a devotional. And uh, mostly they're just allowed to be creative. 
they're allowed to make what they want to make a lot of times and then we also make by commission so people say hey i need a table built we build it for them and the money goes towards uh the materials the wages and different things like that so we're trying to get to the point of course one day where we'd be self-sustainable making enough furniture and things for for selling that we could pay for the class but in the meantime it's all about mentorship and as a family, our update um, is that we're doing we're doing really good. Jenna has recently learned uh, a new skill, and that is to teach English. And so she has developed, been developing her own kind of curriculum and working with um, a website. And so she's more busy than she even wants to be with students from all over the world. And uh, so she's really been enjoying that. And the kids just finished school. And um, so now they're just stuck playing all day long. What do you guys think? Can you say hi? Hi. hi. Talia, is, Talia is growing up so fast, walking, potty trained. Judah, you're learning to read and write? A little bit. Eli, what about you, learning to read and write? You want to tell us your vowels? I-A-E-O-U. Those are the Spanish vowels. So our kids are learning uh, to, to read first in Spanish and then in English, which is um, actually a lot easier because Spanish actually makes sense when you read it. So, And uh, we'll catch Ari. Now. Good morning, Rock of Ages Church. I'm going to tell what I have been up to in the world, in the country of Nicaragua. I just finished school of grade one and now I'm in vacation and I have been going to my dad's classes and I've been having a nice time and I've been making new friends. Well, I really hope that that has given you a glimpse into um, what I've been up to with my time. Um, it has been quite full time and uh, Kiss Me has really been kind of off to the side. Those of you who had followed us from the beginning knew that when we initially moved here, it was just about having an ice cream store and uh, that just has gone bad and then worse and, and then worse yet. And so it's been a, a huge blessing because it pushed me and to be where I am at now. It pushed me um, quicker than I, than I was hoping because my Spanish is still mas o menos. This morning, I wanted to talk with you about influence and I wanted to do it while I just take a walk. So if, uh, if, it, if the camera's too shaky, I apologize. Maybe just, I don't know, turn the camera off and you can listen, but if not, you can, um, maybe we'll meet some of the people or see some of the houses of the people where I'm working with. I'm standing right here is the airport right behind me and um and then directly in front of that is one of the churches where where we're working this is the main one where we do our classes in the morning we call them reinforcement classes and um i think jose explained that to you kind of what we're doing our goal is to get these kids in school eventually but right now um when they're so far behind they haven't gone for a few years we really got to just catch them up um, we also do our our youth group here we also were doing our um we called it a morning coffee talk and that was where we, we did different topics. We talked about abuse and then the other month, uh, every Friday, we had talks about um, finances and kind of how to handle that, went through how to make a budget, a weekly budget, and um, some of those things. So, and we're gonna be doing some cooking classes and this is where we'll do a couple Christmas parties, um, one including all the churches and the other one is with all the kids. So anyway, take a walk with me this morning to, to my neighborhood uh, here in Leon, Nicaragua. So, I really wanted to talk today about influence because this has been really close to my heart um, because I'm dealing mainly with youth and children right now and I'm watching a lot of terrible influences. Here, when you are an alcoholic, you don't do it hiding in your house. You do it on the street corner and all your buddies come out and you can get this little bottle of rum for about a dollar and uh, so even the poorest of the poor get super drunk and um and they do it on the street and so all the kids like these guys what are these samir alberto isola okay see a la nueve okay nos vemos so um where was i 
Yeah, so guys like them, they're watching their older brothers or their uncles, maybe their dad if their dad's around, um, but most likely a stepdad or the mom's latest boyfriend. It's, it's really messy and um, maybe not more messy than us, but maybe it's more up front. And, um, and so that's why influence is so important because for kids, they're watching everything that you do. Um, this has become very real for me, one of these, because everybody watches me. I'm the weird guy, I'm the celli, is what they call me. And um, so I walk down this street, everybody says hi, everybody's watching me, and they all have their opinions. Every now and then I get a little glimpse into the gossip that goes on about me and it's pretty funny. Um, they all think I'm a millionaire. And of course, compared to them I am. Um, we rent a nice big house in the neighborhood and for us it's $500. Um, it's a, a steal. Uh, but for them who are living in houses like like this one, I mean you can imagine the contrast. It is there and, I'm, and I can't deny it. And of course I'm completely different. I can't speak the language, I'm, I'm weird. I talk funny, um, so I'm always being watched. And I have to ask myself, what, what message am I sending? What am I telling the people who are watching me? Um, I have an issue with anger. I get really frustrated easy, and I get angry. And when I'm working in construction, I like to throw my hammer. I don't know if any of you can relate to me, but, um, but man, I gotta watch that. And, and yet, in that, like my, my teenage boys, they all know it because I've done the carpentry class with them and they've seen me throw my hammer or, or get frustrated and, and there's something about that that's very real and so I, I'm not ashamed to have that as my downfall to be honest with you. Do I want to control it? Absolutely, but um, I want to be real and sometimes the difference between a pastor in, in this context and just somebody who lives here is is just that is they're seeing the reality that the everyday We love to put on a front don't we especially Canadians. We're really bad for that We love to put on a front But as a pastor they don't have the same kind of influence as an uncle as a brother as a dad as a co-worker um, Those are the ones who really have the influence so in my context what I have is a gift. I'm often cautioned against um, spending time with certain with certain teenage boys because I'm told they're bad. And just yesterday, actually, um, a neighbor said he doesn't want to send his son to my carpentry class because there's a bunch of bad kids there. And I just laughed and I was like, man, that's awesome because that's the kids I want to be in my class because I know that my light is stronger than your dark th than their darkness. In Matthew five. 16, I believe it says, you are light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Uh, neither do you light a lamp and put it under a bowl, but you put it on a stand so it gives light for everyone. And uh, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So I know that I'm a light, not always. And uh, I know that if you're like me, this COVID crap has uh, really put a damper. Man, I... Um, yeah, it's, it's been a tough time, I think, for a lot of you. You can relate, and, and I'm definitely not exempt. It's, it's been hard to, to have hope for the future of travel, the freedom of, you know, just having things that I, I just took for granted for so many years. And even as a believer, mm -hmm. buenos dias, Jose. Buenos dias. Um, and so it's, it's been a hard time. Si, a las nueve. A donde? En la pan de vida. Aquí. Agradece pan de vida. And uh, so it's been a hard season to continue to be a light and yet so, so important. Um, so important to continue to shine a light, not to get in fights with people. Uh, you know, with COVID, I find myself tempted at times because often I'm on the opposite side of the argument. And you know what we, we forget is, you know, it's, it's one of the things that um, some of the people talking about masks, I'm not going to get into that argument, but one of the things they say is that it dehumanizes people. And it's very true, isn't it? That um, masks and social media, they dehumanize people. And we say things we would never normally say. And yet they cut the same way. So we need to focus on being a light. And what gives us our light? The word, reading scripture, spending time with the Lord. That's, our, that's the source of our light, isn't it? That's our electricity when we plug in. 
So when I'm hanging out with these guys, I want to always be a light. I don't want to just be the weird, rich Canadian who might give them some something to eat today. Um, that's why I'm so careful about always giving away. That's why I'm so careful about what I do with them and for them. When people want, say, well, oh, we don't have food, I say, well, let's make a job or, or um, let's create a micro loan for you if you have a job idea. Um, right here, actually, this house was the latest micro loan. Um, I forget her name, but Angelo is her son and I work with him all the time. And so, and one of these. And this is another house uh, where I have another micro loan. And she's paid on time every time for, oh boy, I would say the last six months. So that's exciting. Um, so back to this idea of being a light. Light is stronger than darkness. I don't remember the scripture, but it says, um, if, you if you light a light in a dark room, uh, light cannot be hidden. I anyway. The point is, light is stronger, and we are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You have an opportunity, despite your circumstance, to be a light. And mainly with those around you. Who has God put in your life that you can be an influence to? Who has God put around you that you can influence instead of being influenced? Angelo, como estas? Oh no! Oh, just dropped my book in the water. That's a bummer. That's some sewage water right there. <laughs> Dice, hola a mi iglesia. Hola. Haciendo una video para mi iglesia en Canadá. Pétalo seco. No, está bien. No importa. Anyway, so, so guys like him. This guy also tried to break into my house one time a few months ago. And uh, we had a stern talk. We moved on. And he saw the way that I was able to love him in the midst of it. Because my stuff isn't who I am. Ah, no importa. When we look at the examples in scripture, um, they don't talk about numbers. This is how many followers I had. It's very rare that they talk about numbers. In fact, what we see is examples of mentorship, which was one-on-one, -on -one, uh, like the example of Elijah and Elisha. Elisha just went everywhere with him. He just lived life with Elijah. He followed him and followed in his footsteps and he learned and he grew. Uh, same thing with Samuel and uh, Eli, following uh, the life and just sharing life together. And of course, my favorite example is Jesus with his 12 disciples. Jesus didn't choose a hundred people to follow him. He didn't choose 500. Of course, he had people following him, but he chose 12 to live life with him, to share life together. And I think that is the most significant example to look at, that um, what we need, we don't need more pastors. What we need is more people to live a mentorship lifestyle, more people to be intentional in the way that they influence those who are in their life. And whether that be a family member or a neighbor, or maybe somebody new that you bring along, you find a common interest and you say, hey, let's go hunting together. Hey, let's sew together. Let's do something together. And you begin to very intentionally influence and mentor that person through just time to So, I'm, I'm running in circles here, so I apologize for that, but um, I'm really excited for you as a church, for Rock, the way you guys have uh, held together during this time, for the way that you have adapted uh, these online meetings and everything. I know that a lot of churches, it's been a really hard time, and yet this has actually been a gift to us, hasn't it? In, in a sense, to rethink what is the most important things, what is valuable and how much those relationships are missed. I think, um, you know, before moving here, I took it for granted that I could go to the church four out of seven nights of the week and, and fellowship with people and get some finance classes with, with Neil Schantz or I could, uh, you know, get a riveting Bible study with um, Stuart Kasdorf. Or... There's just been so many amazing people of influence there was around me on an everyday basis. And what an amazing gift. And I think now this time of being a part has, has helped you all to really appreciate that and to value that. And um, so think about those who you want to follow. So there's two things with influence. We need to be looking for people to influence us, 
to be a good influence on us. And then in the same way, looking at those around us who we can be a good influence to, that, who we can be a light to. And, you know, I think of people like Vern Bashu. You took time for me and you're this busy mentor uh, in, in the work that you've been doing. You have an amazing history and you were this professor in university and you took time for me. And that impacted me, that influenced me so much. And uh, there's so many of you in the church who were such a powerful influence in my life. And, and I don't take that for granted, um, especially having moved here and not having that anymore, or at least maybe just from a distance. One of the things, um, oh man. Oh yeah. So when it comes to parenting, I was, uh, the other day somebody said to me, I'm really jealous when I watch you with your kids because I never had a dad like that. And I said to him, the thing is that I, I had an amazing dad. A dad who always told me how proud of me he was. He always told me that I could do whatever I wanted. He always told me I could dream. When I told him I was gonna live in a van for a year, he was like, oh, okay, that's weird, but yeah, good. When I told him I was gonna travel around the world for a year on faith, he said, that's great, I'm proud of you. He always believed in me and loved me and was consistent with me. So I said to him, I said, I have no excuse. If I was a bad dad, I deserve the harshest punishment because I was given an amazing father. And because of that, I have the best influence. I can only continue to be a good influence to my kids. And of course I'm not perfect as a dad, but I have no excuse not to be the best possible because of what I've been given. In the same way, my wife has an unbelievable dad and somebody who's also been a mentor in my life and, and uh, somebody who prayed for her when she was in a dark time. And one day I said to him, I said, Dave, I, I owe you my marriage because, because you prayed for her, she is who she is because you never gave up on her. And that was the influence she was given. And now I get to inherit him as my influencer. And I have so many people like that. Um, I watched my brother go through a really dark, dark time. And in the midst of it, he was so rock solid that in that time I was like, he's my hero. Absolutely, my brother is my hero. Because I watched the way that he was so solid. And those of you who know him, Andy does not like to talk. He doesn't lose a lot of words like me. And so his words are very powerful, unlike me. Okay? El Rio. Ah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I think, I, th I think this morning I want to encourage you, think about who is an influence in your life. Think about who has impacted you. Thank them. And uh, be thankful that the Lord has put them in your life. And then look at who you are being an influence to. I look at these guys, they're now following me along, they're now with me. They don't understand me, so it's okay. But, they're watching me. And what kind of example am I giving? What am I doing that is saying to them, man, I want to follow Christ? Because, is preaching at them going to make them want to follow Christ? Not likely. Not likely. Living life with them, sharing with them. That's probably going to make the biggest impact, isn't it? Anyway, bless you this morning. Um, there's a lot more scriptures I had in mind, but of course as I'm walking, and I had a small notepad which I dropped in sewage water, so um, I'll leave you with this. Don't be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Uh, in Proverbs, I think it was, it said, um, those who walk with the wise become wise. So surround yourself with influencers and be an influence this morning. Um, I hope that I've given you a glimpse into uh, my life here in Nicaragua. I hope I've given you kind of a... Sometimes I forget and I don't realize maybe the parts that I'm leaving out. And so, please help me. Fill me in. Uh, I mean, like, with questions of, of maybe what I'm not making clear. I spend my time 
basically just with these guys I bounce around a little bit to the classes um, I started off at the English class and here I'm walking up to the carpentry class and so I'm gonna leave you here um, and I'm gonna say goodbye and bless you may the Holy Spirit be with you during this during this difficult time and um, and if you're alone I really pray that you can find some fellowship in some way because um, man we, we need each other yeah. buenos dias chavalos and uh, here we are at the carpentry class. So, adios and uh, be blessed. Well, we welcome you to our time of communion when we get to encounter our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> to begin this time, we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Connie's going to read for us the account of Jesus crucifixion, uh, his resurrection for you and for me from different passages in scripture. Good morning everyone. I'm going to start by reading from Luke 23, 33 to 43. When they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Then the next passage is from Matthew 27, verses 45 and 46. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Lamech Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then the last passage, John 19, verses 28 to 30. Later knowing that all was now completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now let's hear the gracious invitation of our Lord Jesus, given to us first of all in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And then that familiar passage from John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And then 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just 
and will forgive us our sins and cleanse or purify us from all unrighteousness. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Corinth in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verses 27 through 30, he encourages them to examine themselves before they partake in communion. So let's do that. You don't have to go digging. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you if there are things that need to be dealt with, whether they're more recent or from quite a ways in the past, things that may have hurt others, may have hurt Jesus, may have hurt yourself. Let's just take a few moments now to confess our sins to our Heavenly Father. God, we are so thankful that you invite us to come, just as we are, to confess those things to you that have hurt others, have hurt ourselves, have hurt you or your name. We thank you, as we read in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, you're faithful, you're just, and that you will cleanse, you will purify us from all unrighteousness. So God, we just put everything on the table for you, in front of you this morning. Ask that you would cleanse our hearts. Thank you for that precious blood of Jesus who was shed in the cross for each one of us. In his name we pray. Amen. Now let's confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 16 and 17, we read, Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all share the one loaf. If you're home alone today, you'll obviously be serving yourself. But if you're more than one, if you're gathered as a family today, 
we encourage you to serve each other and speak the words, this is my body given for you, this is my blood shed for you. Let's do that now. Connie, this is the body of Christ given for you. Art, this is the body of Christ given for you. Connie, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Art, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ is now giving you his holy and blood through which he has made full satisfaction for all of your sins. May he strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto everlasting life. Amen. 1 Corinthians 11.26 says, For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we give you thanks and praise for Jesus. Thank you that through him you have created all things. You were sent to be our Savior. He took on flesh and lived among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross, putting an end to death by rising to new life. Lord, grant by the power of your word and the power of your Holy Spirit that as we've received your body and blood, we may be assured once again of the forgiveness of all of our sins and be strengthened by your presence in our lives. We offer you our spiritual sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now receive this benediction from Hebrews 13, verses 20 and 21. This is for you. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God's peace be with you. God bless and keep you all. Amen.